here covering all the action, siliconangle.com, wikibon.org. This is uh, our flagship telecast. We'll go out to the event, extract the signal from the noise, talk to the alpha geeks, talk to the CEOs, talk to the startups, talk to the data scientists, and uh, I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante, and we're here with Jeff Ammerbacher. Uh, I guess your title is the chief data scientist at Cloudera, but you're a data geek. You were on last year, one of the most popular CUBE interviews. Uh, I think you'd use the word gym rat uh, for data <laughs> geeks. We want to look for data geeks and uh, data's hot, and now exploring the data is a big part of the themes this year. So welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you for having and, me. And uh, we love having you on here because we want to have these kind of provocative conversations <laughs> because last year you talked a lot about the data scientists and playing with data. This year, it's the conversation is making the most out of the data, get that understanding gap as Tim Estes talks about a t digital reasoning <laughs> closed and making the most of the data. So uh, what's your take on this, this trend and from a data science standpoint? Um, Sorry, <laughs> somebody just about walked into the screen there. Uh, I'm sorry, the, which, no, data which science. trend? So, so data <laughs> science, relative to extracting the data, the insight side of the market seems to be hot right now. Yeah, sure, I mean, the more data you plow into this infrastructure, uh, the bigger the bottleneck is going to be on uh, turning the data that you've collected into something which can actually um, improve the outcomes for your business. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of work that's happening there. Um, obviously, we're very excited about you know, taking uh, Hadoop from the existing workloads that it's able to do well at today, which are mostly data preparation related, um, and allowing people to do interactive queries over them uh, using Impala. Um, so, you know, we've been working on this for two years, and uh, I think it's the it's most meaningful change uh, to the infrastructure that I use on a day to day basis for data analysis um, since Hadoop. We just talked to Mike Dauber, who's at Battery Ventures, and he, he made this metaphor. It's like, if you could type one query into Google a day, that would kind of suck. Right, <laughs> so imagine like, so, and you have different kinds of queries, but you know, you want to be more real time, so the, sure. the market needs to have reflection on data sets, you want to pull data in, you just don't want to do one thing. You're, there's a lot of human and or machine learning based techniques you could do on data that allows you to do things, and you need to do things faster, you don't always get that right question the first time. Right. Can you talk about that dynamic and what that means to the infrastructure and some of the software and some of the data analysis? Yeah, you bet, so I think that when you're doing a data analysis project, you'd like to be able to issue a query and receive the results back um, from your query in the time in which your working memory is able to hold uh, the motivation for that query in its head, right? So everyone has a, a pretty finite limit on their working memory. And uh, so that was, that was the goal of what we built with Impala, was to allow people to kind of iterate on the questions that they're asking uh, of their data. So you submit one query, you get the result back, and you immediately submit another query based on what you see in those results. Uh, and so you, you follow this path um, when you're performing your data analysis. And the, um, the trends out there right now that are hot is obviously Hadoop and data and data science. Uh, real time has been a big thing. What, is, what, 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 are peop what should people know about real time? Because uh, that's a big part of the Impala is the whole real time aspect sure. of it. What does that mean to people? Because um, there's real time for financial traders who need you know, mil milliseconds to seconds to minutes. Right, so I think real time, when I hear people say real time, I try and break it down and understand exactly what they mean. Um, so there's one problem that we've solved from a real time perspective at Clydera with a system called Flume. And that's the time it takes from data to go from the place where it's been to the place where it's going to be analyzed. Um, so Flume is trying to shorten that gap between data generation and be data being ready for analysis. So that's one aspect of real time. Uh, another aspect of real time is just saying, when I want a small piece of data, uh, I can get it back really quickly. And so HBase is a really useful uh, tool for saying, hey, if I can specify the row and column and version of where my data lives, then I can get a small amount of data back very quickly in the milliseconds. Uh, Impala is trying to solve more, a problem which is more about how can I aggregate data um, in a single or multiple columns or across multiple tables uh, in a very fast fashion. And it's a, it's a very, very difficult problem uh, to solve. You have to do uh, a lot of work to make that, that query very efficient. And a lot of times at scale, you're bound by the speed of disks uh, to be able to get data off disk. Uh, but that's, that's probably the most important class of queries that we see our analysts performing are these uh, kind of aggregation and join queries. Um, so that's the class of queries for which Impala is real time. Now there's another set of uh, problems for which Hadoop is not yet real time. Uh, so there's some integrations with solar, for example. So HBase is very good if I can specify the small amount of data that I need uh, based on a row and a column. Uh, but uh, solar goes beyond that and allows you to specify what data you need based on perhaps the, the full text context uh, contents of one of those fields or you know many, many columns. So you know uh, faceted search is very good at being able to to pull back data uh, in real time uh, across multiple columns or within the, the field of a, 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 of a piece of uh, free text. And there's another uh, set of real time 
uh, problems which are solved by sort of stream processing or complex event processing engines. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of databases research on this 10, 15 years ago, um, which turned into some com commercial vendors who didn't necessarily get as much uh, market traction, I think, as they anticipated. Um, and now there's kind of a new generation of open source offerings, uh, which are trying to do this stream processing or complex event processing. So this is taking tuples in flight and trying to do manipulations or aggregations over them um, before they even hit uh, uh, persistent storage. Uh, so I think that's another interesting class of uh, real-time computation. So you know we're we're constantly trying to take what uh, the problem sets for which Hadoop is useful and expand that into the next most important problem set for which is useful. And from our perspective, Impala was the next most important uh, problem set for which uh, Hadoop could be used. Uh, but we definitely see those additional uh, use cases uh, as ones that we'd like to solve in the future. You mentioned uh, you're spinning this problem. Does Flash take care of that, or is that just um, unfortunately no? So. No, it's not the expense issue. It's actually, um, Flash is only about uh, two to three X faster than spinning disk for uh, serial scans. Uh, so if you're gonna, most of our uh, analytical queries uh, involve serial scans of data, uh, and you don't really get that big of an improvement for Flash. So if you look at a 10 X price increase for a two X performance increase, uh, it doesn't really make that much sense. So Flash can be, I think there are certain workloads uh, for which Flash could be useful, but uh, for the Impala style uh, queries, uh, the only way to get there honestly is more efficient query processing and more sophisticated algorithms for uh, for joining. Uh, Jeff, talk about H, talk about simulation scanner, talk about HBase, because yeah, HBase bet. has an interesting scanning feature, um, a scanner within HBase. Is that, uh, does that play into it? I mean, why is, H well, I guess, why is HBase so hot right now? Obviously, a big part of, Sol I mean, of, of Impala. Um, yeah, so Impala can run over data stored in HDFS or in HBase. Um, and as you guys are probably aware, uh, we recently hired Michael Stack um, and his team, uh, J.D. Cryens, um, and L.A. Clark away from uh, StumbleUpon to come work at Cloudera. Um, so, you know, we now have uh, eight people within engineering full time and, you know, dozens more outside of engineering and uh, solutions architects and sales engineers um, training and support uh, who are all working on HBase. So um, it's clearly very important to us. And uh, I think that the scan features, though, actually could use a lot of work. So HBase, uh, as a data store, is a, sort of a write-optimized mutable column store. Uh, so it's very, very good. It receives all of its writes into memory, um, and it can keep up with very, very high write volume. Uh, but today, if you're trying to do a serial scan of a data store in HBase, uh, you're going to see uh, a pretty big degradation in performance compared to data stored uh, on HDFS uh, in a file format like Avro or Trevni, which is a columnar format that we're working on. Yeah. Uh, so I think that there's a lot of improvements that can be made to HBase for these um, scan intensive, read mostly workloads, uh, and you'll see us doing a lot of work on that in the next six to 12 months. But you guys put a lot of resource obviously behind HBase. Oh, for sure. Well, I look at all the things that do on the HBase arrow, as opposed to you know, just a bunch of other databases uh, popping up over there, and not excluding those necessarily, but not embracing them the same way. Can you talk about your philosophy there? Yeah, I think that uh, we're very pragmatic uh, in our products uh, philosophy at Cloudera. So we looked into our customer base and we saw that HBase had a tremendous amount of traction. Uh, you know, I think that it was very instructive from my perspective, uh, having uh, been part of the team that uh, that built and shipped Cassandra at Facebook, um, and then to watch Facebook actually make the decision not to deploy Cassandra into production, but actually work with HBase. Uh, so that was that was very instructive to me to say, well, actually, kind of the design considerations uh, that we use when we were building Cassandra um, may not have been as important for mo the majority of workloads. I think they they are important for a subset of workloads, but in reality, I think HBase is the better design system for a vast majority of workloads. Uh, so then, if you look at uh, the variety of HBase clones competitors, uh, the reality is that HBase has been uh, deployed in production for several years. Uh, it has uh, multi-data uh, multi center replication. Uh, snapshots are actually uh, being actively worked on and are basically complete and trunk. Uh, it's got rolling upgrades. A lot of the work that's happening on uh, mean time recovery for region servers um, is getting pushed into trunk over the next couple months. So uh, HBase is actually pretty darn good for uh, operations and uh, it's pretty darn good from a performance perspective these days for its primary workload, which is like I said, that um, random access to small amounts of data. I think it still has a lot of improvements that can be done for um, scan intensive workloads. But it's just when I look into our customer base, it's what everyone's using and it's working. So I don't, <laughs> you know, it's confusing to me when people say we, you know, we've rewritten HBase because I look at it and I'm like, it seems like you could have done something better with your time because HBase works. You know? So what are you looking at now? Sure. Well, I just think there's other problems to be solved, right? So if I had an engineering budget to, to point my, and you know, Mapper's got some very strong engineers. I have a lot of respect for Srivas and Tomer. Uh, I know those guys pretty well. 
And uh, if I was thinking about what I wanted to build, uh, I would probably augment uh, the platform rather than rewrite um, and take on the maintenance burden of maintaining uh, a piece of software which basically works and is in production at, at you know thousands of nodes uh, within the largest web properties, some of the largest cloud vendors. Uh, you know, it's just I see these things. I guess. Maybe the advantage we have is we actually see people running their systems in production. So other people might look from the outside and say, oh, I, I could do this, that, and this better. Uh, but the reality is you don't know until you've put it into production. And I've seen these systems running in production, and they work. So I don't, I wouldn't what are you spend seeing my What are you, what are you seeing in customer? You mentioned you looked at the Cassandra thing. It was a great example, instructive to see it, how HBase kind of uh, was a use case there. What, what are you seeing now outside of the, your Impala view that's, that's interesting to you. Mike Olson brought up Yarn uh, as an yeah. example. What are you seeing out there that you're like, wow, okay, we're watching it. Uh, we might have, we're not overlooking it, but we're watching it closely. <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, uh, Impala is the, the most interesting thing that's happened to me in the Hadoop world since Hadoop. I just, everything else has been kind of noise. Um, outside of the Hadoop world, I'm very excited about uh, what JJ Lair is doing with our studio. Uh, I think that uh, that's a really interesting uh, project that's, uh, they're kind of inserting themselves using an open source IDE, which uh, uses WebKit under the hood, um, which is fascinating, so that it can be kind of deployed on the desktop or in the browser um, pretty easily either way. And uh, they're building a lot of features in there uh, that I actually use on a pretty daily basis, uh, basically a daily basis in our studio. Uh, I think that what Wes McKinney is doing with Pandas uh, in Python uh, is very cool. So part of my workflow today uh, is I take a Google spreadsheet, uh, a Google spreadsheet, I, I dump whatever uh, medium-sized data that I have in there, I clean it all up, and then I have a little script that uses the Google Spreadsheets API to pull that into a Pandas data frame. And then I do all my aggregation and analysis in Pandas. Um, so what I'm personally using, uh, so Impala, like I said, has, has been really the first project within the Hadoop ecosystem, which actually changes what I do on a day-to-day -day basis um, from data analysis. Uh, I've been kind of mostly bored for the last four years. Uh, <laughs> in terms of what, you know, I see everybody trying to make their product work with Hadoop. Uh, and I see, you know, different uh, things happening yeah, within. Yeah. yeah, but I didn't think anything fundamentally new was happening until Impala. Um, so it's actually changed. I actually do data analysis with Impala uh, on a regular basis because it's actually it's interactive. Um, it's using the the SQL dialect uh, that we built at Facebook with Hive, um, and it's got great integration. It's got an ODBC driver, and it can plug into Tableau and MicroStrategy and ClickTech and Pentano. so. Wha so what are the good tools out there? I mean, like for example, I showed you our little HBase app. And we're having a yeah, really hard time great. getting the. Uh, oh, thanks. That's like coming from me. That's a compliment. We want, but it's early for us. But we're trying to get data out there. So we're running. We have all this data, and we want to try to pull it out fast. So we're building some SQL on top of it. So if it's from playing with someone, something like HBase like us, yeah. what's, what, what tools can they do? Because SPSS is out, out there, it's free, you can download it for free, you got to pay money for it. Oh what, man. what tools? Actually, there's one, there's one other project that I get really excited about that I didn't mention, which is uh, there was a set of research papers which came out of Joe Hellerstein and Jeff Heer's work uh, on kind of data preparation and data integration. Uh, so one was called Wrangler, one was called Profiler. Uh, and I think I talked about Wrangler last year. Um, but that to me is kind of like uh, the great, and I, I think, it once again, I think we talked about this last year, the, the great unsolved problem for me as, a, as someone who does data analysis on a daily basis is, okay, I've attained my raw data and I've put it into my repository, and now I would like to beat it into shape and turn it into something that I can actually do model fitting or uh, char uh, graphing off of. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And so th closing that gap is very important. And uh, I think that the stuff that they're doing, so they founded a company called Trifacta uh, to commercialize. Joe's new company. Yeah, precisely. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm, uh, I'm nominally an advisor, although he hasn't, uh, <laughs> yeah, he hasn't called me in to, to do any work for him yet, but it's, uh, I, I never take advisory roles, but to be completely honest, uh, the quality of that team uh, and the quality of the research which backs it up, it reminds me a lot of the early days of Tableau. Uh, you know, where you had uh, a great good data, data bunch of good gym rats working on some data problems. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, the the, uh, the 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 core research which undergirds Tableau was done, you know, almost ten years ago by uh, um, Pat Hanrahan and Jock McInlay and others, folks. And um, I see a lot of what happened with Tableau, and you know, obviously Tableau in the market today is a, is a real behemoth. Um, and I think Trifacta, if I look at the people who are trying to say, how do I take what people have put into Cloudera clusters and allow others to, to make use of it, um, that's the one I think that has the most promise from my perspective. What's, how does someone... Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Predates a dupe, right? Yeah, for sure. So, um, how do you see that whole visualization space evolving and taking an advantage? Yeah, I think that actually um, Impala um, really gives the existing vendors a really powerful way to, to take advantage of the data that's stored in Hadoop. Um, so if you took a Tableau or a MicroStrategy or a, a ClickView or a Pentaho and you tried to put it against uh, data stored in Hadoop, 
prior to Impala, uh, it wasn't that useful because you know you had these these batch query response times. Uh, and for the first time with Impala, you can actually have interactive query response, so people can build charts uh, on the fly. So I actually, uh, you know, if I if Tableau was a publicly traded company, I would I would. I would have bought some stock in those guys because I think that um, they're in a very good position. Uh, I think that trying to develop novel tools um, for visualization over Hadoop is what you would have had to do prior to Impala. Um, and I think it made complete sense for the people who were building those tools to do what they did um, prior to Impala existing. But now that Impala exists, I think that people like MicroStrategy and Tableau and Pentaho and, and ClickTech uh, and Spotfire and others, uh, Cognos and Business Objects, are going to be um, enabled uh, to do take their existing tools and make them work against Hadoop. Sure. Great perspective. So, <laughs> perspective on Hadass. You know, essentially, solving this similar problem. Oh yeah. You're talking about. Well, so, I so yeah, Daniel Abadi, I met at uh, VLDB back in 2006, um, and I've stayed uh, in, in contact with him since then, and I have a tremendous amount of respect uh, for him as a researcher. Um, but I think Impala is the right approach. I mean, I emailed him two years ago and basically said, hey, Daniel, you know, I see what you're doing with Hadoop DB. Uh, here's the way that I think I would do it if I wanted to get interactive query response out of Hadoop. Uh, and I think that he basically didn't think that HDFS could be made to perform uh, in a way that would enable interactive query response. Um, but, you know, we having, you know, the world's leading HDFS experts at, uh, at Cloudera meant that uh, we were able to put in modifications to HDFS. Um, and to be completely honest, in talking with Marcel when he was building Impala, uh, and then I asked him, you know, how big of an impediment was a was HDFS to getting great performance out of Impala? And he said, not really an impediment at all. It, you know, we've done so much performance work. Uh, you know, our competitors will constantly say that they're faster, but literally never once, never once have we lost a Bake Off. Uh, we're able to outperform them every single time. So uh, there's a lot of great work that's gone in to enable those. And I think with Hadapt, uh, uh, and in fact, you know, we recently um, hired a guy named Mark Miller, who was one of the lead architects for Solar Cloud, um, and I was talking to him. Uh, about some of the work that he's doing um, with HDFS, and I said, you know, have you guys seen any issues with uh, uh, performance out of HDFS um, to get solar reading indexes out of HDFS? And he said, no. You know, he said that I was very surprised. He said, it, looking from the outside, I never wanted to get started with HDFS because I thought it was I'd heard all these really bad things, and then once I started using it, uh, the performance was actually uh, almost uh, equivalent to what we were getting out of a local file system. So from my perspective. Um, I, I feel like I, I tried to, to tell Daniel what we were building two years ago, uh, and you know I would <laughs> I would have loved to work with him on Impala, uh, and I hope that we still one day will be able to work with him on Impala, um, but I don't think that an app architecture is something that I'd run. Jeff, final questions. We got we're getting break on time here. What's what's your vision next for Impala? Obviously, good announcement. Everyone's buzzing about it. It's yeah. a great direction. We love it. Uh, it's a platform, so it's uh, it's the big data platform. That's a good positioning to have. Obviously, you're passionate about this, and, and you're excited since Hadoop, which is a testament. Because, yeah. uh, yeah. but what's next? What, what are you going to take this thing? How are you going to next? Next, what's the, what's the so trajectory? So with Impala, uh, I think the next steps are all um, fairly well understood. Uh, you know, we need we have an ODBC driver. We need to get a JDBC driver. Um, we need to be able to put in things like um, improved uh, application level caching. Uh, we need to do things like approximate query results. Uh, we need to add analytic functions. Uh, there's a, a slew of existing join algorithms. Uh, there's fault tolerance. Um, so there's all you know. There's things that we can do to, to eliminate stragglers. Uh, so it's, it's a very very well understood roadmap with Impala. Uh, in terms of what problem that I'm thinking about on kind of the two year time horizon, uh, I'm very interested in scalable model fitting. So I think right now you know we'd like you to be able to have you know one container to do all the work that you're doing for analytical data management. And we're, we're exceptional at data ingest. We're very, very good at data preparation. And with Impala, we're now good at ad hoc queries and reporting. Um, so the big workload that I see next uh, is once I have my, my data all uh, cleaned up and ready to go, uh, I want to be able to actually fit a model over that, whether it's a regression model or a decision tree um, or you know support vector machine or what have you. And what that really boils down to is optimization. Um, so you know we've been kind of whiteboarding a, a new project um, that basically allows you to specify using a DSL for optimization algorithms. So you specify this is the function I want to optimize. These are the constraints that I have for it, and uh, and then we'll try and parallelize that across the cluster. Um, and then we'd love to build interfaces into R and SAS uh, and SPSS with that, so that uh, you just don't have to leave the tools that you're familiar with. So a lot of Impala. Um, it's very important that it's interactive and low latency, but another incredibly important aspect of Impala is you don't have to leave the tools that you're familiar with. It plugs right into your existing BI layer, uh, and it plugs right into your existing uh, SQL interface tool that you're used to using. And so that's the same approach we'd like to take for model fitting and machine learning. 
So that's uh, that's where I'm spending most of my time these days. Okay, conversation with Jeff Hammerbacher inside the cube here at Strata Live at Hadoop World uh, uh, 2012. This is a great conversation and uh, great insight, and got the roadmap laid out for Impala. It's exciting. Uh, we're excited to have you, and uh, obviously we're a big fan of your work and been following you, and we'll continue to follow you. Great job with Cloudera, appreciate your help. And we'll be right back with our next guest right after this break. All right.